Barrys, how do you feel being not only the first returning guest, but also the first guest on the rebooted Who's There with Hotline Callers? What's it like? Ooh. What honour is it? Uh, I feel incredibly honoured. I feel Good. like I'm at the Oscars right now, and uh, mm-hmm. you're going to start singing I'm Just Ken, and uh, uh, Crispy's going to be there as Shooty, you know? Yeah jiving around. I'm just going to be there as Margot Robbie, proudly <laughs> clapping along as uh, I watch you two in your in your element, in your prime uh, for this podcast. I don't know where that analogy came from. I was just like, I need a quick I'm analogy for the it. Oscars. I, well, for I'm, more, I'm more concerned saying that we're going to be the one you're going to watch us. No, we're giving everything to you. We're sitting and watching oh, wow. you. Mm. We need to make this clear. You're carrying the whole thing today. You realise that, okay, right? Okay, alright. I, I didn't know the pressure was on me. I didn't know I'd been elected honorary president of who's there it's a new standard you're the the first returning guest therefore you know what to expect and we Mm. can just kick our feet up and relax can't we crispy it's true yeah that's what we're doing today that's why we bring guests on oh finally the podcast can be good guys (laughs) (laughs) Troy space roll the intro before it gets any more damning Hello and welcome back to Who's There, a Doctor Who podcast. My name is Crispy, his name is Troy, and we have someone else in the call, but we'll get to them in just a second. And we are the hotline that accepts your calls from anywhere in time and space. And today we are sponsored by Thary's VPN. Can you believe yeah, it, Troy? Uh, Thary's <laughs> VPN. <laughs> Thary's, you can watch you can watch your Thary's videos in any country yeah, in any language uh, there's actually dubs of them that'll be like Spanish or French Thary's actually, videos I'm, everywhere that's a fate worse than death oh. I've, I've got Thary's Plus I've got the entire <laughs> Thary's catalogue at home <laughs> Um, oh, mate, so... don't, don't talk to me about charging for plus subscriptions. I got my Disney Plus Ooh. charge for the year this year, and I, oh, I my no. bank balance is destroyed. I didn't realise I was on the premium membership, and everything hurts. Well, um, we speaking move. of premium, we have a premium <laughs> guest in the house today, and if it wasn't obvious, uh, the one, the only, Thowries is here. How are you, sir? Hello. I'm doing good. You know, I'm, do- I'm doing good. I've watched that trailer about five million times, and yeah. uh, uh, feeling feeling good. I enjoyed it. Uh, most people seem to think it was good, which was refreshing. Because, uh, you know, every, every time anything new Doctor Who happens, you have a few people who, like, you'll go onto Twitter and you go, uh, actually, I thought it was a bit terrible. Actually, I hated this. So it was quite nice to not really see much of that. There was a bit, but yeah. most people I saw, pretty positive, which was nice. That's uh, cool. Because I enjoyed it. It was a good trailer. Uh, and I've just been vibing ever since. Vibing? Absolutely vibing? I'm glad. I'm glad you were vibrant, and I'm glad that the trailer was a vibe as well. Uh, Troy, how are you, sir? I I'm didn't good, even realise you were in boss. the chat today. I thought I thought I was just having a, a chat with Thary. In sorry. the chat, I'm in the call. Thank you very much. I ain't, you, I ain't subdued you to are text. How dare on, you? On, on a Riverside, you are on the smallest possible window for me. So you are a teeny tiny little Troy. Well, that's down to you shrinking Troy. or making other windows bigger because I've already adjusted for that. So clearly, Crispy has other priorities. Disgraceful. Um, <laughs> Disgraceful. Although it should, it should be a good point to mention in the of chat that, uh, remember folks, next week we'll be live Sunday night. So come <gasps> hang out for the March News Roundup. We'll mention that. <gasps> <gasps> it's going to have Stephen Moffat in the thumbnail, so you can guess what we'll be talking about there. Um, just mention that now, because we always Stephen forget to announce Moffat these on the podcast, then, yeah, for a second. Yeah, we've actually got like, the exclusive. Stephen Moffat is coming <laughs> on Who's He's there. actually behind was... you now, Ferris. Yeah, oh, my God. I was like, oh, that's a bit of a, a guest upgrade. You go from Ferris to Stephen Moffat. I mean, the, the levels would be a bit... A bit oh, no, it's going to be almost insulting, would company will say it'd it? be a downgrade. It'd be a downgrade. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Exactly. We don't have a Moffat ramp on the TARDIS. We have a Thary's ramp. No, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Oh, we that's should talk true. about that. So congrats. We, we, haven't, we haven't spoken since no, all of that. No. Congrats about yeah. Do you want to tell yeah. the people? Number. That, hang on. That, that I'm, going on I'm going story. on a, a oh, backtrack here. I'm going to look at what episode number it was that we had Thary's on. Uh, the, uh, oh, remember. yeah, that one. Um, hot, I actually hot don't takes, know yet. Hot takes was two, the 60th three. out? No. I don't know. No, I don't think it was. It's been a while. I'm fishing. Yeah, that was mad. Number 67, um, and you oh had KFC chicken in the thumbnail, Crispy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What episode are we on now? Uh, this is 101. Wow. Wow. So this is like Wee. just about like just under 40 episodes on, right? Yeah. 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 Something yeah. like that. Yeah. That's kind of mad. It is. So 
Yeah, actually, it's funny you should mention the, the Rem thing, because obviously I don't know whether you can see it very well, you can't probably make it out very well, but that picture up there, the top one near my screwdrivers, is the signed picture that Ruth Madley signed where she wrote Fairies Ramp on it. So that's Aww. pretty cool. Uh, awesome. That was pretty cool. So, yeah, I mean, the story of it is kind of mad. I mean, like, so um, obviously, for those of you who, like, don't know, obviously, I managed, I got very lucky. The um, the Welsh Film and TV Society, something like that, were doing, uh, a, like, the Royal Television Society were doing a early screening two days in advance for The Star Beast. And um, it was literally, like, a first-come, first-served thing. I saw it on Twitter immediately, like, said, put in all my details and sent an email through and got a ticket. And uh, my mum got a ticket as well. So uh, <laughs> we went together um, to this little this little um, theatre, uh, watched the episode. Uh, Russell and... Uh, was it Julie? I, no, I think about Jane Tranter. Jane Tranter, Russell yeah, T. Davis and a couple of... Uh, people who'd worked on the show, like runners and stuff like that, were talking. And then after that, there was a little after party with drinks. Stefan Powell was there as well, Doctor at least. And um, I, I managed to get up to Russell, and he said, um, "Oh, you're you're Fairies. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you." Uh, and then, um, yeah, which is already, I was buzzing with that. That's mental, um, but yeah, that was. Yeah. I was already just like, "What?" And he said, "Oh, I heard what you said about like the idea of." The TARDIS having a ramp. Obviously, some months before, I must have mentioned in a video the idea of, oh, you know, I, as a kid, I always thought it'd be cool if the TARDIS had a ramp. So that, because obviously it's, it's hard to tell with certain surfaces whether wheelchairs will be able to get on them or not. Because some of them can have like a lip into, into like a building, for example, right? So uh, he heard that and it like made him think and then comes to the giggle and the ramp's there, obviously. I didn't know this at the time, but he sort of said, Trust me, in the next few episodes, there's going to be something you really like. And, uh, yeah, he basically said that the ramp was named after me for that reason, which was kind of mad. That's um, amazing. And, uh, like, when I um, met Ruth then at London Comic Con, she said, yeah, it's named it. And we actually had a little hug over it, which was nice. Uh, so, so, yeah, that's a little heartwarming story. Wow. Uh, Oh my That's gosh. beautiful. Yeah, what, there was a, a video of Ruth, wasn't it? In the was it the behind the scenes video on yes. YouTube? I don't think it was. Yeah, and she mentioned about it, about you know, how it was for a fan that like it was a it was a suggestion from a fan about the. the we ramp, have the I was fan. Like, I was like, we have say the his name. On the call. Say his name. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. careful. If, if you if you say his name three times, he appears. He appears in your yeah, bathroom. No, oh, well, all right. So Doctor Who's not the only trailer you saw this weekend, Crispy, huh? That's actually how I got here. You like said my name three times. Yeah, yeah we, did, we didn't send. Wait, so if we say it three times again, can we get rid of you? Do you want to do a bit where I like leave? Thary, <laughs> no, 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 stay with us, stay with us, Thary. No. We need you. Uh, we've got, we've got lots to talk about. But thank you. That was such a beautiful, I don't think I've told story. the whole story that in. Well, I've told most of it um, in depth, but I, the bit about Ruth particularly, I haven't spoken about really. So you've got a bit of an exclusive there. So yeah. There you go. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. Well, thank you. you. That's it's a, it's actually genuinely awesome, and thank you for yeah. making yeah. our beautiful show even better. Uh, thank you so very much. You're a, you're a bloody legend, and we love having you, and we love having you on. And what a week to have you on! Hey Troy, what's been happening in Docky Who Land? Not much actually. It's been quite quiet this week. Yeah, I it's thought. been real quiet. Yeah, yeah there's nothing happened. to talk about. God, we, we were going to have an episode for context purely about the whole release date move changing thing Correct. because that mm. was pretty big. And then they went, oh, by the way, trailers coming, and it was like, oh, so shifting priority, I guess. But yeah. there's a lot to talk about. I mean, we'll save a lot of the release date talk for again the news episode next week. We'll slip that in with mm. Moffat. We'll cover two birds, one stone. But Mm. Just, it, just can we get your quick thoughts, Tharys? What do you think yeah. about the release date shift? Okay, the release the date shift. I am... Okay, so here's the thing. Obviously, it's difficult with, with being a Doctor Who fan, right? Because whenever you talk about something like this, either I find on Doctor Who, like, the community, it's either the best thing in the world or everyone despises it. And yep. I was probably closer to the negative end, and I still sort of am, but I'm not, like... BBC, you've ruined my Doctor Who throwing, like, eggs at Russell T. Davis's window <laughs> saying, like, <laughs> why have you moved it to midnight? Um, it's more just to be honest, my dislike for it is entirely selfish reasons, I'll be real with you. It's uh, mainly just because, like, from a 
in YouTube perspective as a UK person, obviously, Crispy, it can be completely different for you. Yeah. For me, it's kind of inconvenient because it's happening at midnight. There's two episodes, which means it's not going to end till 2 a.m. Who's going to watch a video post 2 a.m., 3 a.m.? Nobody's Probably. doing that. You would, yes. But for, like, the UK people, they're all asleep in bed. They don't yeah. want that. So uh, That's a fair point, the YouTube perspective, yeah. Yeah, this so it's good. entirely selfish reasons, to be honest with you. I'll be real. Um, I mean, there is an element, too, of, like, I guess just fragment fragmentation in terms of, like, when people are going to watch it. Like, that, I think there is something to be said for that community aspect of everyone gets on social media and talks about it at the same time, and there's kind of that communal aspect to it. And now, obviously, people are going to be watching it all at different times. You're going to have people watch it at midnight. You'll have people watch it during the day, and then again... At BBC one time so there are drawbacks to it however I think given how much exposure Disney is giving Doctor Who as I'm sure we'll cover with the trailer and stuff I think like it's probably worth it in the long run the uh, end's just even about though the means, personally yeah. even though personally I'm not big on it but again it's mostly for my own reasons than anything else no that's fair it's interesting mm. hearing another like YouTuber, Hootuber, I should say, is our official yeah. job title, Tharys. It is, um, it is. I put that on my like LinkedIn. No, oh, <laughs> that's good. That's good. I did it actually. I, I have I, I will. I will now. Not even joking. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, though no, it is. And, but for purely selfish reasons, I'm excited for that because yeah, I, exactly. I mean, yeah, Troy and I will get into it uh, next week. But like, yeah, I've never, I've never had Doctor Who on a Saturday in my life ever. That is pretty mad. Ever. That's the funny mad. thing is, <laughs> despite me being in the UK and Crispy being in a different country, you'd expect one to be far more positive than the other. I think we're both going to be positive about this. I, like, okay. I, I've talked about it a bit on my own channel, but like, I, I'm just as eager to get a heads up. I'm not particularly annoyed about it. Is it a bit of a hassle? Mm. Yeah, but I actually think it'll work better in the long run. I'm with you, Therese. I think the ends justify the means here. But Yeah, I think that's about where that. I've come to. Like, I wasn't overly keen at first, uh, mm. but it is it is the kind of thing of like... If we want Doctor Who to be the big international brand, we sort of have to make some trade-offs at some stage. Yeah. And although I will say, like, I mean, I feel like for Australians, I get you being happy the most. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, I think, obviously for Australians, it's great. I do think not only for the UK, but the rest of Europe, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of an L because like, yeah. you got like Germany and France who are now getting it at like 1 a.m., so there's the end till like three. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So like the premiere, because it's two episodes, wouldn't end till like 3 a.m. So it does seem to have benefited more a certain sector of the globe, which is mainly obviously Australia, but also like America. It seems very American, very, which is fine. I yeah. get it. Mm. Um, but I do think for Europe, it's a bit of a shame. Not just the UK, but just most of Europe. I think it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a shame for them. But... We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We will see it, how it goes. If it doesn't work, like, they can always change it. If they think, oh, actually, this isn't quite getting the result we want, mm. tweak it about, you know? So that's my thoughts on it. No, well, thank there you. you. Thank you. We can thank get into all of, all of our thoughts about it next week, but now I think it's time that we have a caller because we're, oh. we're a little bit late in using our first caller, Crispy, oh. I think. So let's get Tharys in on our new feature so what we've done in case you haven't heard but I know you listen to every episode because obviously you're our biggest fan there you go good, I am. Good. that was good didn't have to pay him to say that either he just no, picked it no. up very good stuff no, no. we didn't have to uh, pay him because we we're sponsored by Tharys VPN today <laughs> shut up VPN. so uh, we have got some callers in with their thoughts on the trailer and we'll use that to guide our discussion I'm expecting at least one of these to be talking about David Tennant so I'm gonna, we're going to save our comments on that until uh, we get to that point uh, so Crispy who's calling in first Oh, look, we got lots in the bank. We got lots in the bank. Who we gonna ask today? Who we gonna ask today? It's Big Lock. It's Big Lock. Let's What's listen to, to them. Hello, Big Lock. I haven't listened to any of these calls as well. This was sent in an hour ago, so it's fresh in the, in the inbox. Here we go. Hello, Hello Big press. Lock. Hi, boys. It's Big Lock here. Uh, thoughts on the new trailer? It feels very exciting. Obviously, it's building up the hype for May 11th. My only issue, which is quite picky, is that it's very Disney-fied. That I'm, like, back in the day, old school, but BBC trailers. But for Doctor Who, a bit more grounded, you know, I like the costume. Saying that, I think it's a good change that will come. I'm just not used to it yet. 
and I like the David Barry track in the background. But I'm very excited. And yeah, thank you. Interesting. Oh, okay. That was a very balanced perspective. That was very, very like, no, You don't want to get that in the Doctor community, do you? No. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Stay yeah, off Twitter. No, that, was, that was good. Yeah. I will say, that reminds me of, I think it was the top comment when I last looked. I don't know if it still is now, but there was a comment on the Disney Plus trailer that said, hey, maybe Doctor Who with a Star Wars budget won't be so bad after all. And I was like, yeah, yeah. it's looking good. Yeah, it it's was looking weird, good. I will say. Like, obviously, the 60th was a bit of a bump again, but I think mm. you can tell that the proper Disney involvement has started with this. Because immediately mm. you get that all CG shot of the TARDIS careening towards the unit tower and sliding in like perfectly. And you're like, yep. yeah, some money's been spent on this. <laughs> you can tell, you know, you can tell that it's it's just it's just a different level to where it was even for the 60th. Because uh, that was kind of so the 60th is weird in hindsight, isn't it? Because it's kind of in the middle. It's not quite Disney era yet, but it sort of is. But it also sort of released like normal time for, mm. for like us. So it's a bit of a weird well, in between when you think about it. I think they started filming the 60th before the Disney deal yeah, was in I place. Think that's I, true, I, yeah. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't know. You, you're probably better with news. No, and you're stuff, definitely but I swear, right. I think it's just a yeah. case of they like helped polishing it, I think, towards the yeah, end. Yeah, most but, like, definitely. It was mostly. I'm pretty yeah. sure part of the Disney deal, like they took them to set of the 60th and saw all the cool stuff they were doing. Yeah. Like, all right, yeah, and it would also me explain up. why Rachel Talley, who directed the Star Beast, said she had no idea about that intro scene of, of 14 mm, yeah. and Donna explaining the background. It would explain because she'd be like, "May I wrapped on this ages ago and suddenly there's a new scene I since when? I wonder if what? that was a Disney request, like that the was. Church on Ruby Ru Oh, it was, was it? There, that that? Was, there was cool. a, the 14 and Donna recap at Star Beast was a Disney request as well as the policeman scene in Church on Ruby Road. They're yeah. the only two Disney requests I've heard of. The I was there the for that scene being filmed. The policeman what? scene. Oh. I was the policeman scene. The snowman. That the snowman is so one, I was damn there. cool. I remember oh. the, the big snowman being set up, and uh, it was. I can tell you some fun trivia because when oh, I was please. on the set. Um, we were having fun with because you had like a bunch of drunk people passing by because it was a Saturday night you know everyone was coming out the, the pubs and the clubs etc and uh, we were having this fun game of telling them the wrong thing of what it actually was filming no. and the one that actually <laughs> the, the one that actually really caught on was uh, we told them it was the John Lewis advert uh, the John Lewis Christmas ad uh, for those for the crispy might be looking a bit oddly that's <laughs> That's yeah. like that's like a big shopping retailer in the UK who are known yeah, right. for their like prestige Christmas ads, right? So it kind of made sense as a lie because you're yeah. like, there's a big snowman falling on a woman. Um, and they were more excited for the idea of it being a John Lewis advert than they were for it being Doctor Who. Oh, like, the people oh, we, we told who were honest about it were like, oh, Doctor Who, cool. John Lewis advert, oh my God. <laughs> you must have got at least one Doctor Who I haven't watched since David Tennant was in it. Then you could have yeah. got, oh, I actually. Think, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's back, uh, actually. He's actually on right And now. he's in season one. But anyway, um, I also Ooh. think it's funny just purely on the comments about changes being used in the trailer, just purely as an anecdote, because I don't know if you saw me post yesterday, but I was in London uh, for the weekend. I went to see uh, Matt Smith in a play on stage called Enemy oh, of the People, sick. which was Ooh. fantastic, by the way. I mean, the dude... They, they, they have the second half of the, the, the play, without spoiling it too much, I don't know if there's any way you'll be able to watch it afterwards. There might not be, but they like have a town hall segment and they talk to the audience... And like get people to like take part in the play, Ooh. which by the way was hilarious because a couple of people they asked did not realize it was part of the play. And as they were speaking, were like, "I'm really enjoying this play. This is really good." And, and they were looking <laughs> at them like, "Can you just play along, please?" But at one point in the first half, they all sing "Changes" together by David Bowie as like a band. Oh, so and it was, I'm seeing it the day after the trailers come out, so I'm sat here like thinking something weird's going on here. I was baffled. <laughs> He's entered the Matrix. Man. Yeah, He's taken, man, taken the pill. There's a it's, it's, a good, yeah. it's a good song, so I it, appreciate it, the it use felt, of it. You know, it felt very fitting, didn't it? Not yeah. only on obviously time and all of that sort of stuff, but also the use of the word "changes." I think um, felt very kind of. Felt very significant for a new era, didn't it? It reminds me of Amen. you know when Series Eleven used that glorious song, <laughs> and it has it has, but it has the lyric, "I feel glorious, glorious, got a chance to start again." And then uh, you have with this one, ch -ch 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 changes. So I'm thinking yep. there's like some there's some there's some symmetry there in terms of era launching trailer. Let's get a song that kind of evokes that vibe of change. See wow. yeah. English literacy B. That's I was going to say, it's like George Lucas said, it's like poetry, they rhyme, you know? Yeah, no. it is, yeah. Um, 
So yeah, what was the other thing that was uh, said by the caller? I was something, something else that they said. Oh, the Disney oh, fight. Disney fight, yeah. Disney fight, yeah. That was an interesting point. I mean, I did see. I don't know whether you saw on the Instagram the replies to the trailer. The Avengers account replied saying, mm. uh, "Loving the architecture." Uh, in yeah. reference to the, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the unit. The, oh, did you see I that? Seen that one? Oh, no, really? Yeah, uh, the, ofi- the official yeah Marvel Avengers uh, account yeah. commented. That's yeah. so funny. They reply being like, love the architecture. Uh, on it being Disney fight though, I don't know. I think it definitely feels bigger. And I definitely think yeah. you can look at the two side by side and, and um, view it as like, you know, more more contemporary in that sense, closer to what Disney Plus is, but it still feels like its own thing to me. You know, I don't know Most many definitely. other, sh- I don't know many Disney shows that would have like a Bridgerton gag. Do you know what I'm mm, saying? Yeah. Like, I just <laughs> yeah. don't know whether that for would a second ha- I had to double take and be like, wait, who's the deal with? Is it with? It's not with Netflix, is it? I was like, no, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Dis- like, yeah, like so. I, I think it still has its own identity i do get it though because it does look i I get what people are saying because like you look at that big avengers tower you look at the big budget and you go "Hmm, i see what you're doing here i see mickey's money making my my doctor who like a disneyland attraction i see what you're doing but no i actually i think i don't know what that was i felt like (laughs) like an american i don't know but yeah i think i think it's good that it looks on the level because that's something that Doctor Who has always struggled with, even when they tried it with, obviously, you know, I think a lot of the Chimney era looks great, but you can see they just don't quite have the funds to get it quite where they want it to be. Yeah, this is, you know, they this want is the it biggest, to be. most definitely. Yeah, yeah it, it's, and like, it's it interesting. It feels comparable now, which is interesting. Chimney's um, era got the cinematography nailed down, but now the actual mm, visual effects will be nailed, even more nailed, nailed, nailed down with. Yeah, now everything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting just especially with the massive like cash injection that doctor who has and yeah. what has me slightly worried not worried but just intrigued was part of like what i thought russell's brilliance was in the for his first four series was how good his stories were even though they had a shoestring budget you know he yep. whipped out he whipped out midnight because they were like we need something cheap we need something net. but now he's like, to write one of his now, best episodes yeah, look, but now <laughs> russell has like Russell's top dog, and he can pretty much do whatever he wants. So yeah. I'm intrigued to see what that looks like. I'm really intrigued to see what that looks like. I can like. understand the fear of that to an extent, though, in the sense of, like, as Troy was saying, that mm. limitation is what birthed arguably mm. one of his best scripts. Yeah. And another one of his favourites is, like, Gridlock, which is fundamentally alien traffic jam like that's not i can't imagine that was one of the more expensive episodes (laughs) of series three you know what i'm saying yeah so i do understand the argument that if you give them too much it's almost like a limitation breeds creativity thing right like absolutely if you don't have any limitations is that going to make it not feel as special i don't know there's a lot of arguments that are valid so far though i'm i'm pretty confident that it still feels like it's got its own quirk to it it doesn't just feel like Obviously, you know, nothing wrong with the Marvel stuff, but it doesn't really feel like that to me. It still has its yeah, own absolutely. flavor. Well know? put. Couldn't agree more. Well put. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, should we take another caller? We definitely should. Let's do oh, it. Who do, you, who do you want? Pick one out for me, please. Oh, sorry, you, pick, you one pick one out? Okay, I'll pick one. Uh, let's go with Grace. Hello, Grace. Is this the which Grace is this? We uh, Troy Let's, had a bit I'm of not, a. We're not going there. Had I'm a not bit of an argument the with the Grace Graces, last week. And I, I literally did a one I minute just monologue. A random name. And then Russ, it was the wrong Grace. So I'm not making the same mistake again. Hello, Grace. Hello. Hi, boys. It's Grace, proud executive producer of the hit comment section bit Grace's thoughts and Doctor Who podcast commentary. Um, I literally just finished watching the trailer. And my thoughts are that I love how Ruby's family is going to be playing a role in this season. So I was wondering what your thoughts were on that. Ooh, boy. I can't believe I saw Carla out of her bed at one point. I was like, she's not going to be in her bed constantly asking for a cup of tea. What's happening? She's done yeah. a Grandpa Joe, man. She's going to start, like, <laughs> dancing around. <laughs> <She's> done... <laughs> the miracles happened. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, I agree with that. I completely in agreement i've kind of missed the family being a focus to be honest with you like i've kind of missed that um and i think as you were like saying with carla carla was one of my favorite parts of church she's so fun 
And I'm glad we're getting more of her and more of... Uh, no, just Cherry in colour, is it? Cherry's the one who's asking for a tea, of course. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, Cherry. They, I got it wrong, Yes, Cher- Yeah, no, 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 I got it wrong as well. But those two yeah. were great. Those two were great. Um, and I'm glad that we're getting more of them. And I like the fact that they're on board with Ruby travelling, but they have to set some ground rules for it. I think that's a nice way of going about it. Because obviously with each family member, they kind of react to it differently. Obviously, Wilf, he's delighted. He's like, go see the stars, do whatever. But Francine, like Martha's mum, she was a bit more like, I don't know whether I trust you. And she had sort of, you know, Saxon whispering in her ear. And Jackie was a bit like, you kidnapped my daughter, what are you doing? (laughs) With Carla, it seems a bit... (laughs) With Carla, it seems a bit more like, I can see this is good for you, but I have my concerns, which I think is interesting. I, no, I that, wonder if that scene point. of her saying, you know, can you keep my, my, my daughter safe? I wonder if that's like a doomsday type scene where, you know, mm. Jackie's like, oh, how long are you going to really be traveling with him for? And it's a, a conversation that predates like something big happening. And like that actual yeah. conversation doesn't happen until, say, episode it's giving seven, finale episode eight vibes. of the season. It's yeah. giving finale vibes. That's what I think. I think it is a bit of like a finale. Like <laughs> she finds out Sunday. or they explain it. And... The narrator goes, "She did. he did not in fact keep us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then David Tennant walks in and he goes, ah, don't worry about it. I'm here for a spin. Actually, really quickly, uh, Darius, uh, 14 Doctor spin-off. Do you think it's happening? Yes or no? I don't, but I wouldn't mind it. It would depend on how it was done. I think it would depend. It would depend. I would want Shooty to have his time first. So yeah. do I. I maybe give him two series first and then if you wanted to like have a little crumb a little tenanty crumb you know maybe <laughs> yummy. <laughs> yummy. My, my, my prediction mm. and I've said this on social media Tastes now like, is we're gonna we're gonna mm, see the 14th Doctor of, in this getting, season and it's gonna set off a set up his spin-off I don't I think they'll think do it in season one I think you need that fresh light, right? I think you I hope, need... but I also just... I mean, David Tennant was in the trailer, man, and that was 10th Doctor David was, Tennant of all things as well. My counterpoint to that would be the way I think that scene's going to play out, I definitely think that's a, you know, like 11th hour type scene where yeah. you have the hologram projections of, like, all the Doctors being like, these are all the Doctors that we're aware of. And mm. then shoot, he comes up. My theory is... I don't know what this is like. A, it's popular. It probably is quite common. But you know the Regency England episode. You know Jonathan Groff. Yes. He played one of the, my yes. theory is he's a time agent, which is what Jack oh. was, um, and that's how he's aware of the Doctor. Because if you're a time agent, you travel through time. You're probably going to be aware of like the main person in the universe who travels through time. Nah, um, he so won't know. I think he might. Because that's what all <laughs> yeah, the holograms he will, he will. are. Yeah, I think I think he might. I think that might be what all the holograms are, um, mm. and then obviously Shooty comes foil some kind of plan that we don't know about. Yeah, that's my theory, but mm. who knows? It's just a I don't think it's anything more than that, David Tennant wise, though. And I don't know whether I would want it to be at this stage. I agree with you. Like I, I said this to Crispy right the way through, so I don't want anyone to ever mistake me as saying I, I want David here instead of Shooty. I don't. I very much want to see Shooty thrive. I just, it was set up too nicely that's, in a giggle. That's not what you said, Troy. Season one, that's not what happen. you said. It is what I said. Don't no, you, don't you know, you you know what you said? Be a liar, young you know man. what you said? You said, <laughs> I don't want, hates I, the 15th Doctor. AC, he says, I, I want 14th Doctor only. I think Shooty doesn't deserve a first series. If anyone's going to get a whole series <laughs> on Disney+, Plus, it's going to be David Tennant. That's a direct quote. I was, I was about Episode to make a joke 84. and go, I'm wearing a Shooty t-shirt, and then I looked down and I realised I put the wrong t-shirt on. It's David Tennant. Oh, so, well, look, we're not going to... We're not... <laughs> Listen, <laughs> listen here. Oh my goodness, need Call I say handed. anything Call more? Next caller, next caller, Mr. Scarlo, uh, what have you got to say? Hello, Mr. Scarlo. <laughs> uh, oh my God, I think that was a great trailer. Maybe the best series trailer, trailer for a series since series five. Ooh. Just amazing. Mm. Loved it. Uh, <coughs> just overall great. Loved the stuff that I've seen from the Doctor and Ruby. And now all this stuff we've seen from episode two, The Devil's Court, I'm really interested in that. And that's come to my question to you guys. Is there an episode of series 14 or season one that you're most excited for? And if so, why? Oh, Bro, Mr. Just Scarlo, down the mate. On you are you okay, mate? <laughs> Mr. Scarlo, you right? Mr. Scarlo, brother, you're allowed to do more than one take. You're all right. You, if, if, you're not feeling, if you're not feeling too well, it's all right. It's all right, mate. Gosh, that's we so all understand funny. the pain. I hope, trying to like... I hope you're okay, Mr. Scarlet. Yeah, we all understand. Waiting on his call as well. I'm just checking. 
I think so. Yeah, I, no, I think that was his end. I, oh, no, yeah, I think okay. that was the call. I think that was the call. <laughs> the recording yeah. went very badly for oh, him. We all, we all understand the pain of trying to record something and being ill, and you're just like, yes. yeah, hey, guys, I, I'm great, yeah. I promise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what? You know what? We, we laugh, but Mr. Scott, you still got you still got your call in, and that means the most to me, so I appreciate Dedication. it. Dedication. Dedication and a half. To the, to the cause. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was the question? The, I was about the, to say, what did he ask? I think, I think that the music episode, the one with Jinx Monsoon, that's apparently called oh, The yeah. Devil's Chord. I don't know if that's confirmed oh, yeah. yet or not. It is, that, that's yeah. a bit, it is confirmed. Oh, well, excellent. I think it is, yeah. I think it's going to be fantastic. I, I think so too. I'm very intrigued. I just intrigued. love the shot of Ruby being like held up in the air by musical staves. Like, I'm mm. fascinated by that. That just looks really cool. It's very Doctor Strange. Are we all in agreement that like Jinx Monsoon is like one of the Toymaker's legions? Because I think it makes too much sense. You've got a toy Ooh, man. Yes. Now you, now you got yes. the music woman. But I think that makes tons of sense, right? That's with very, you on that. Yeah. The, the well, toy maker, well. the music maker. It makes sense, S- right? Speaking of the trailer, you hear Kate Stewart say, uh, "I'm like things are getting more supernatural or whatever." Yes. And yeah. I yeah, think and Russell, Seventeen Russell's... Winchester shop. It was my favorite part of the trailer. Oh, well, there you go. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that Russell has said that things, because of the toy maker, are going to get kind of more supernaturally. Yeah. And I'm kind of here for it. Well, there it's was a cut line from season one, Church. Yeah. yeah, there was a cut line from Church that was, you know, you know how they released the script libraries on yeah. the BBC website for all oh, the scripts? Right, yeah. There was a cut line from Church where the, the Doctor directly says, hey, Ruby, do you remember the giggle? Well, that set off a chain of events that led to things getting more weird. You know, including these goblins. That's not oh. an exact line. You could probably find it if you go yeah, online. That's the, he said, hey, Ruby, do you remember 2023's The Giggle <laughs> on Disney remember? Plus? Did you watch 2023's 60th anniversary special number three, The Giggle? Uh... Starring David Turner and Catherine Tate and Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, no. And me. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and I was there. No, yeah, but that was the gist anyway. So I, I yeah, love this idea that he has of like basically the toy maker allowing these more supernatural entities to kind of come in and cause havoc i think it's a really like unique hook and uh, i see a lot of concerns about this being too similar to like the first era for me as in the first russell era for me i think the idea of like mythical gods and creatures kind of firmly puts it as its own thing because when you look back at like rtd1 it's relatively, I say relatively grounded, it's not grounded because Cassandra's in the second episode, but I also mean, <laughs> as Donna says in The Giggle, you can kind of get your head around most of the ideas, you know, they sort of make sense in a vague scientific way, right? Like, so yeah. again, using the Cassandra example, she's like a human who's been used like plastic surgery and all this to alter herself to a point where she looks like a trampoline. That, you can you can understand how that happened, right? Hmm. With something like the toy maker, bro just exists, and there ain't yeah. a reason, there ain't a, like a rule to how he exists. He's just there. And right. I think Same that's the not things as well. Yeah, Beyond. the not things were exactly the same. Oh, I rewatched Wild Beyond last night. Man, it's still so good. It slaps. It's still yeah. incredible. It slaps yeah. and a half. It really does. But Fantastic. yeah, no, I, I really like the the cosmic stuff, and I think mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to seeing Jinx. Uh, I'm wondering, I saw a theory actually that I thought was quite interesting that I was going to put to you. So you know that mm-hmm. bit when um, a guy looks like he's trapped in the drum in the trailer? Yes. Like he looks like he's clawing his way oh, out yeah. of like a drum, a drum kit. I saw someone put a theory that the uh, Jinx Monsoon is going to trap the Beatles inside their instruments. And I actually really like that idea. Whoa. I actually think that's really cool. That's like a theory I saw, and I think that's sick. So I don't know who said it first, but shout outs to you, because I think that's... Uh, Cool Ooh. idea. Damn. Yeah. So, wait, is J- is Jinx Monsoon in the Beatles episode? Is I that think so, related? right? Because it's all 60s, yeah. Is that it's episode all 60s two? music, Abbey Road, Beatles, it all Yeah, it that's all episode two, up. yeah. So we're which going is even to... more interesting. Wow. The, so we're going to London... get that opening night. Yeah, which is even weirder considering like the London Apocalypse stuff. Like, that's quite a big bombshell for episode literally. two. Mm. I'm assuming that, yeah, literally. I, I'm assuming that's like a... A you know, sort of thing of like, hey Ruby, if the Beatles don't exist, this is what's going to happen. It's just the and plot of yesterday. Oh, right. yeah. I was baffled what you meant by that. I was like, is there a plot device I missed? No, yeah, because there is that shot of them yeah, in the middle of shot. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Which to Could be honest be episode... doesn't look much worse than London now. To be really honest with you, <laughs> <laughs> you go to London. London's rough, man. It's I, yeah, yeah. I got uh, stuck anyway. there one time. This is, anyway, well, I uh, have bad memories of London, Troy. Okay, don't, don't, I've got trauma. I've got things. Why are you saying to me like I'm going to fight you? I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I, I love London, London, man. 
but as soon as I got there, I tried to find a public toilet, uh, and oh, I couldn't find any public toilet. Yeah. At all. You, you, be, the better so, way is to look for a spoons and then go in a toilet and a spoons and then you'll be sorted then. That's everyone's the talking way. about yeah. spoons. Everyone's talking yeah. about spoons. <laughs> I had no idea what a spoons was until I got over there. Disgraceful. Uh, Did crikey, you go to Greg's? Moses. Yes, I went to Greg's. What was the department store that we went to, Troy, that one time? With your hey. mum and Meg in Liverpool? We went to a shop and we got uh, the, the, the soup. I'm, the, the, I'm coming to soup. What was that store oh, that we Tesco. went into? Oh, Tesco. <laughs> we Tesco. Big Tesco. I went yeah. to Big Tesco. <laughs> yeah, I went to Big Tesco. It to be like some sort of obscure like, British supermarket. You went no, to I thought you were going to say Primark or something else. Like, we didn't oh. go to Primark. I went to Primark <laughs> in uh, London. Uh, yeah, anyway, nice. that's it's a fun little trip down memory lane for me. It is. Um, it is. Just, but well, yes, Thary said London, he was excited for Jinx. Dump. Well, I, I'm excited to hear Jane. So why don't we get Jer- Jane's message in? Oh, Jane. Jane. I tried to find alliteration. So, All yeah. right, hello, nice. Jane. Like Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank How are you. you doing? Hello, boys. How are we doing? Good. How are we feeling <laughs> about uh, the doctor telling Ruby's mom that he'll keep her safe? Has the man learned nothing? <laughs> <laughs> is he uh, stupid? I was thinking my first thought was like, so Moffat's getting an episode. Is he just going to use his opportunity to like kill Ruby off because of the foreshadowing? I'm kidding, but am I? Anyway, I don't know if you heard that. That was my cat. Anyway, <laughs> bye bye. So, uh, wow. For a second, I thought that's how that was going to end because there was like a second or two delay, and I thought it was going to be, "Is Moffat going to kill Ruby off?" Silence. Silence. <laughs> no elaboration. <laughs> Crickets. No, yeah. Um, wow. Do we know what episode number he's writing? Is it? Is it three, am I dreaming I that I've heard? The room, yeah, I was going to say I thought I'd heard yeah. three. A lot of people think it is three, but it's not confirmed yet. No. Some okay. people are kind of uh, adamant that Moffat might be writing the opener. I don't believe it. No, I don't, I don't, think no, I don't believe not. it at all. But the director is assigned for episode one and three, whatever that is. Uh, Moffat, or Julianne something like Robinson, that. we know is yeah. episode. We, mm. we know is doing Moffat's episode, right? Because they say yeah. that in the little yeah. announcement. And I think so, they're uh, directing the opener as well. I think. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I, I, you can still have a different, like you know, writer and director. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Do you know a- what absolutely, I mean? like, absolutely. It's just um. No, yeah, I theory. don't mean you. I just mean the people saying that, like, ah, see, oh, yeah. it's the same. Oh, I, and by the way, I realised, just for the odd couple of listeners who might not have seen the news, uh, yeah, Stephen Moffat has actually been officially announced. He is oh, writing yeah. an episode, and it's oh, not in his <laughs> second season, it's in his first season. So, in case you haven't heard that news, again, we will talk about it next week, but that's just making sure that you're aware. Cause there may be Question people who didn't quickly, know that. on that no. topic, I know you're saying I'm coming back to it next week, but while I'm here, I might as well ask. No, <laughs> don't care, Get, shut up, shut up. Oh, okay. Chris, who's next? Okay. No, no, on, no, no, no. No, I was just going to say, like... Do you think he'll also write one for the year after? Because oh, I think yes. the fact that they've announced him... I think the fact that they've announced him for this one just kind of legitimizes every report that he's also doing 2025, right? Like, uh, I that... would personally say we may get a repeat of RTD1 where Stephen Moffat's given one story every year, and I, I would, would not be, be so opposed to that. I would be game for that. I would I'm, be so game. I'm happy to put money on that he's also doing Christmas this year. I'm happy yeah, to put that money was, that on that. That was the rumour that came out a few days before yeah. it was announced was that he was writing the second or the third, I suppose, Christmas special. Not so, yeah. I, I probably would prefer he did the normal episodes. As no shade I. against Stephen Moffat's Christmas episode. I actually, you know, Christmas Carol's my favourite one of the Christmas Well, specials. he's wrote one of the best and one of the worst. So, you know, yeah. it, it's take it or leave it. But it's like, if I want a Moffat back, I want him to have free reign. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I want him to be mm. confined to Christmas. Christmassy or an ideas. Opener. Or, yeah. or anything like that. I want him to have his slot where he could just run wild in his head and do mad stuff. Well, so, don't uh, you want him running true. wild in his head? That that could be dangerous. Uh, that's, that's, in too, all that's fairness, too much. Could be a lot fairness, of innuendos coming up in, in episodes if that if that turns out to be the case. Don't look at my <laughs> browser history. Um, oh no! <laughs> but I'm pretty sure there's been what like seven Christmases since Moffat was in town, right, or something like that. Since Moffat was writing, twenty seventeen so, was last Christmas somehow. special. So yeah, so because of that, I feel like Moffat in his day to day life, he looks at things and goes, "That would make a great Doctor Who villain." So I can guarantee you, on one of those Christmases, he would have looked at something. Maybe it was uh, a Christmas cracker, and was like, "I'm going to write a whole episode about Christmas crackers." Or maybe That's... he went in big Tesco's like you. Ah, oh, 
Me and Moff are big Tesco's. He saw what the he saw the, the 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 Christmas stuffing and went. There's a story in that. There's a story in I that. Wonder. I'm gonna I wonder. Find, what it is. I'm going to find a story. I'm going to find the gosh damn story. You've heard of Base Under Siege? Now we'll get ready for Base Under Sage and Onion. Anyway, that was terrible. Ooh, so, wow. To answer Jane's Whoa. question, uh, well, we kind of already did. I thought that was yet, good. I liked it. Truly. I really enjoyed oh, that. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I, I was ready to that. move on because I thought you'd find no, it terrible. So thank it. you very much. It. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, so Jane said about the family aspect. We kind of covered that already with the, the with the mom and the keep my daughter yes. safe. I'm all for it. And but, Ruby, yeah. so there's going to be some tragic fate for Ruby. Something yes. bad yes. is going to happen. And also, maybe not death, that, but we'll see. On that as well, with um, you know that one shot where it's the two of them together, and then it flashes back to the church. And mm-hmm. Shiki yes. stood on his own. But that's a great yeah. edit, by the way. That's a really cool edit. Oh, Just did it so good. But do you think like that's hinting that maybe the idea of maybe the doctor's gonna feel guilt over not telling ruby about the mum because obviously there's that bit in church isn't there where he like where the mum oh yeah he almost he almost goes and says what happened but I he, think he does do you think he does i think it's one of those narrative devices where we don't see the full scene and you're led to believe a different way like uh the most mm. recent one i remember is uh wakanda forever the shoot scene between if you have you seen Wakanda Forever Thurries? I know. I what, actually Chris haven't Ross. yet. You know, I'm behind. I'm afraid okay, to well, say it. Sorry, oh. slight spoilers, but the conversation between Shuri and Killmonger, you don't see all of it, and then later on it snaps back to it oh, and you see more right. and recontextualizes things. It gives you more like, context. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think, I think that's gonna ha- have happened. I think they're gonna have done a jump cut and actually goes back to Titus after having the conversation. Because in the trailer, the mum does turn around and point. So she's involved somehow. Just Do we saying. think that's the mum for definite? The hooded flicker? Yes. I, I, yeah, that's fair enough. No, no, it's not. It's Jodie Whittaker, and we all know that to be true. <laughs> Jodie Whittaker <laughs> was, is Ruby Sunday. She's going to smash a mixing the, bowl the, on the, the thing episode. I love, the thing I love about Doctor Who fans is whenever they look at a new piece of content, they, like, have to find a way to, like, find an old character. Yeah. doesn't matter how outlandish <laughs> it is. Uh... I think, it's what we oh, do. What was, it's part of the there's job so description. Many, there's so many fun ones. Like, um, what do you say about Jonathan Groff? Everyone kept going, oh, that's the new Captain Jack. That's the new Captain it Jack. Might be. It's not. I, it's I, I not. It's not. Yeah, I feel like I feel like just let Jack retire, man. You know, he's yeah. Done. If you're not bringing Jack back, you know, if you're not bringing John Barrowman back, don't bring Jack back. That's I also a think can just, just go with him. I also think. Can you imagine John Barrowman's Twitter feed if Captain Jack came back and it wasn't him? I'm oh. just saying, I don't I, know where the I Battle of Studios app. wants that. It'd be, it'd be think... the same energy as that one video uploaded we went to see old in cinema and said he didn't like it, so he demanded the cinema refund him, which <laughs> yeah. was definitely a choice he made. Yeah. I mean, good yeah. grief. And that one that one video of him at the convention where he's like, they all love me! And they love me! Oh, God, I hated that. I hated that so much. And he does so like much. a Joker-esque cackle. I was like, okay, yeah. John, are you okay, buddy? Oh, it was just like a psychotic version of Toby and Spider-Man 3 being like, they love me. It's like, no, <laughs> oh, you're too self-aware no. of it now. It's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, um, that was a tangent I wasn't expecting to no, have for this no. podcast. Oh, um, yeah, it was, it was resting on our shoulders, you could say. So, uh, Crispy, we have a couple of callers left. Uh, yeah, what right, do you, do you want to have, do we, should we do both of them? There's two left. Yeah, let's go. There we go. Let's it's go. Speed Jeremy. run, speed run. Jeremy. Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy Duncan. Yeah, Crispy. Wow, look at that budget. I mean, they got David Bowie for a trailer. Wow. Mm. I thought he was dead. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, incredible. One thing I thought, uh, superstitions are coming to life because the doctor invoked them at the edge of the universe in Wobbly mm. Yonder. Maybe one of those superstitions is the butterfly effect. Maybe that's why it affects Ruby. Maybe because these superstitions and that kind of thing are able to happen, it is ripping apart the vortex because Russell said something about the vortex changing every episode and it's important to the plot. Anyway, y'all have a great day. I think bro just predicted the plot of yeah. series 14, bro. I heard anything Bro's, about the vortex, but yeah, that all seen, adds up. Bro seen yeah, the no, scripts. there was, he did say like with the, the title sequence, the vortex is going to get more and more like unstable or something. And you even see a bit of it in like, Ooh. The series 14 trailer there's a shot of the vortex we've not seen where it does seem to be getting a little bit more a little bit more wobbly so uh yeah good job I calling mean, it series 14 appreciate you for that i, I mean <laughs> listen i i alternate between the two I, yeah. I do think on that though i think it's the right call in the sense of hear me out on this with that new trailer right going on disney plus I don't think it would have gotten as many views as it did if it was labelled Series 14. Because I think oh, the normies 
yeah. looking at Disney Plus would go, I ain't oh. starting on the 14 series. Where's the other 13 of them? Like, this is this is uh, another thing like the release times where it's like, it's a bit awkward, but it makes sense. And yeah, I back the logic behind yeah. it. But no, on that, I think that's a sick idea. Like the idea, because like, we've never really had the butterfly effect as a thing. No. In Doctor Who, they've kind it of It was just, mentioned in Thin Ice. It was, and it was mentioned in Shakespeare Code as well. Oh my they gosh, you guys are good. And, uh, oh wow. Uh, I am in uh, Chris, we doesn't watch Doctor Who. We, me and Farry's are totally doing sitting on bedrooms and watch Doctor Who. I've never Hill. seen the show. I, yeah. Like, Troy yeah. just calls me up and I read the Wikipedia before we get on. Never seen a frame you, of it. Do you know when you did your first I watched classic Doctor Who video? Yes. Did you get anyone in the comments being like, oh my god, you're a fake fan? I can't believe you've never seen classic Doctor I... Who before? Just I just watched. I did like another one again, and yeah, I still I like ev- every second comment is, "Wow, you're a fake fan," and yeah. I'm like, "This is me trying to get into." Don't throw at me, then. G West. Classic Who fans are vicious, man. They'll be like, "You don't they... remember this one thing from this one episode four years ago?" I... And... <laughs> Wait, look, a lot, a lot of the comments are like, "Oh, it's so nice to see a, yeah. a younger fan getting into the into the show again." But a lot of them are like, "Wow, you you call you you call you how can you call yourself a Doctor Who fan for the past?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 look, I I feel like it's kind of rude. Uh, you can, you can be a yeah. fan of something and not have you know have seen their entire encyclopedic thing. knowledge. There are, of all there, are of there are like artists I listen to, and, and I haven't listened to every single one of their. EPs before that doesn't make me not a fan of their music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, yeah. I agree with you completely. Let's just I agree. live. Um, Preach, but back... bro's preaching right now. Bro's cooking. I that's, cooking. that's really well said. The weekend's yeah. one of my faves, and I've barely listened to his first few albums because it's just not me. I don't like them as much. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Times change, yeah. and so must I. But with ch- Jeremy's ch- 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 changes, <laughs> with Jeremy's uh, butterfly theory, he has absolutely nailed it on the head. Yeah, I think the whole superstition thing will be a big part. And I didn't even think about the fact that that's a superstition. Mm. But it is. It is. True. And uh, yeah, Maybe Sarah's someone will saying, walk under a ladder and then die. But you never know. You never maybe, know. Maybe a tree will fall in the forest, but then it will, like, disappear. So the tree it won't, won't make really any noise. Have, yeah. yeah <laughs> the tr- if a tree falls and it was make a noise, does it really fall? And the tree falls, doesn't make a noise, and then it evaporates from existence. Oh, I just love the idea of the get tree just like scene. cross dissolving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just get a Star Wars fade white. Yeah. Russell, <laughs> get me in for series two, Russell. I'll write yeah. the oh episode. My God. Yeah. Oh, very good. All right. One the more. Tree of one more. We're running it tight, but I think we can fit one more. And what oh, have we got? Let's Sam. It. Let's do it. Hello, Sam. How are you today? Sam? Oh, no. Oh, it's got stuck. Uh, Refresh the page, Crispy. Refresh. Farry, have you got a Sam. joke for us while Crispy refreshes the page? Uh, do- uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? Oh, you said the thing! Oh, hey! hey! Play Very the call. Good. Okay, hello, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> so, Lizard Ruby, is she a Silurian? Is this a hint at some kind of original Silurian story where they never... Fell, the human race never rose, and the lizards continue to rule the earth. Is Ruby even intended to be a Silurian? Is this just going to be some sort of one-off butterfly effect gag and not a whole episode? I do not know what to make of that one. What are your thoughts? I think you got it right the second time. I think it's a yeah. cutaway gag. I think I, I'm pretty sure this episode one garb, aren't they? So like that's got to be a throwaway I quick think, thing. I think they might explain it with what Jeremy was saying about there being like you know the butterfly effects for superstitions, and that's why that kind of exists now. But like I don't think it'll go much deeper than oh this is the thing weird things happened kind of kind of deal. I'm, I'm expecting like a Family Guy esque. <laughs> one time when yeah. heart music <laughs> yeah exactly uh, it's kind of what i'm envisioning i don't know whether i mean it's cool the idea that she could be like a solar in i don't think they'll go into that though i could be wrong but... yeah well look uh, the, the gag works in the trailer and yeah it might just be a throwaway gag but i would really genuinely enjoy if they did spend the whole kind of episode on everything that went wrong because Ruby stepped on that butterfly. And then at the end, at the end, do some kind of Father's Day thing where she has to push herself out of the way or, I don't know, do, do something. <laughs> For a butterfly! For a butterfly. Well, I think that, well, that's that, that's what they say about time travel, you know? It's what I don't it, think they got the budget things. for that, big man. I'll be honest with you. you well, know, I, I think they got all the budget now. 
They got, they, they, budget. They got money now. They got money now. They, they can do that butterflies. Is true. That is they true. They can do butterflies. But I did think that the, yeah. the CG on her face, like, may, again, I think it's down to not being used to the new look of it. But, like, anyone else think Snapchat filled to the first time they saw it? Or is that just I me? Didn't. I didn't. I think it's prosthetic. Good. I, I think know. It's... I think it looked good, but like it was. I think it was because it was so out of place in Doctor Who. Like the way that it looked, I was like, I was like, oh, uh, not bad. Just immediately I gave it me something. But actually, to be fair, I think that's probably down to the fact that the trailer was washed out, and that's why it didn't look good. Oh yeah, we haven't spoken about this yet. Actually, yeah, because yeah. that was should... the last thing I wanted to mention. So if you don't know, it's been uh, talked about online that the trailer that was put up online on Disney Plus's channel, and I think also Doctor Who's, is a 4K version that was basically scaled out of being HDR, which is like a different version. If you don't know the tech aspects, it's the colours pop more, that kind of thing. Um, and if you try and convert it or put it down to standard without doing it the right way, the colour gets all washed out and looks faded mm. and grey. And that's why a lot of the shots of the trail look funny, because they've done that. They've put the wrong version. They didn't put a standard version. They had like a DHER version. So it looks all washed out. The point being, if you watch it on Disney Plus natively... The colours far like pop way more. Everything's brighter and cooler. It looks so, so maybe good over CGI here, guys. Oh there, and that's gosh! One. Again, I don't it's think so this face looks good bad. I just think it, first, it looks first, so out of place. And I was like, the better you get, the better release time. And now you get the better, you get the better trailer. Well, with well, Ferry's VPN, say? you can watch the trailer on Sorry. Disney Plus and see for yourself. <laughs> so please use the code Who There Ten at checkout uh, for ten oh percent off your Ferry's oh VPN. There you this go, is yeah. not a gag I was expecting, but I'm fully embracing it. I'm launching a VPN. I'm just, Good. <laughs> I, I want that to be your next video. When, I, when this episode goes up Tuesday morning, I want a video Tuesday night announcing Farry's VPN. <laughs> I, I, will, I, will, I will do just that, just for you, Troy. Good uh, man. But Good Farry's, man. we thank you very much for being on here today. But before we let you go, no just give us your general overall thoughts on that trailer and how you're feeling as we head into Doctor Who's very first episode of all time. Ooh, <laughs> the first episode ever of season one of yeah. Doctor Who, the, mm -hmm. the brand new show that never existed. Um, yeah, I'm feeling really good. Like, obviously, I think with all, like, Doctor Who, you get a bit of, a, like, a dead zone around when, like, you know, episodes aired and then you're waiting for the series, right? And I was definitely in kind of that slump for a little bit. Not in, like, a, oh, I hate Doctor Who kind of way, but just in, like, a not feeling much towards it because not much is mm -hmm. happening yet, you know? There was kind of a spell where, and I'm sure you guys doing a weekly podcast mm. can attest where you're like, what's the news this week? There isn't, there isn't oh, really we've said anything. that so many times. That's <laughs> how I felt about Payday 3 for the last six months. Anyway, yeah, you were yeah, saying? And, no, like, and um, I think, obviously, you, you wait for, so, you know, one thing to come along and then it all just comes along at once. Like, you had Moffat, yeah. you had the release schedule and... Um, the premiere and all that sort of stuff and then you had obviously the trailer and yeah i think the the, the midnight air thing did kind of knock me for six but then the trailer came along and absolutely like crushed it i i do agree with i don't remember who said it but someone said here it's like one of the best doctor who trailers i actually went back and looked at a bunch of the doctor who trailers the other night and uh whilst they probably are some i prefer i do still really like you know the one series five one where mm. Smith and uh, it's Amy and Eleven and they're laying on the grass in the and they're like pointing at the stars and then the yeah. vortex. The only one I, I still, think I've ever seen in the cinema, yeah. I still think that's like peak Doctor Who trailer for me personally, but I would say this is not too far behind. Um, and like, yeah. yeah, it definitely did its job of hyping me up. Um, something I felt fresh to me as well. Because again, as I was sort of saying, I think there was some concern that it could be too similar to the last mm. era. Mm. This feels like its own thing to me. This doesn't feel like RTD1 or Moffat or Chibnall. It, it feels like Doctor Who, but it's not Doctor Who that we've seen, which is a good thing with what you want. Um, you want it to feel different. Yeah, I felt really good about it, and I'm, I'm. It's made me look forward to it. I don't know whether you guys saw that. Yeah, Russell suggested there was going to be more trailers and stuff like Ooh, that. He said on Instagram. Good stuff. So uh, got that to look forward to, and uh, I think it's already mad like how well the trailer's doing as well. Like, yeah, the Disney Plus trailer is over three million views on YouTube, and Mental. I think ten million on TikTok. So oh, it's wow. Doing wow. Mad. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I was, Let's I was looking go. At it oh, today. our little shows. Um, I, I it's, know. it's still got half a million on Doctor Who's official channel, which considering yeah. they put it up after Disney Plus is still good. And I think it's currently number 18 on trending. We're recording this on Sunday it night. It's so two days later, it's still trending. It overtook the Penguin 
trailer, Mental. which also came out at the same time. And it's better anyway. The Penguin will be great, yeah. but that trailer was a bit mid yeah, anyway, that, in my opinion. Yeah, so. yeah, no, I, I kind of agree with you, actually. Uh, yeah. But I was going to say as well, like, another interesting little fact. Sorry, because I'm just obsessed with numbers, okay? Oh, I find please. this stuff really interesting. But yeah, like, the um, the Eras Tour trailer on the same Disney Plus YouTube channel is on Don't three point is on 3.6 million. Doctor Who's currently on 3.1 million after two <gasps> days. So there oh. is a genuine prospect that Doctor Who could overtake a Taylor Swift trailer, which is kind of mad to think that's about. That's this week's clip. Uh, that's this week's clip. karma, baby. <laughs> wow. I can't that's believe it. That's kind of mad to think about, isn't it? Doctor Who yeah. versus Taylor Swift? Who's going to win? Never thought I'd see the day. I never, never thought, thought I'd see the day. I mean, Doctor Who is one of the things that could have an era's tour in fairness. It oh could. my gosh, I would, would go to be? the Doctor Who like, Era's Tour. I so would. There's got to be, someone on Redbubble's got to have made an Era's Tour t-shirt of Doctors. If they haven't done that, they're missing out. Wow. Yeah, definitely. If oh they haven't, I'm now claiming royalties. If you do that on Redbubble, I want to cut. Okay? You should do it. You should do it, Troy, and you should become a millionaire. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I might do that. <laughs> do it. All right. That's Troy's latest assignment, and you can see it yep. on uh, Who's There? Dot uh, you can do it whilst <laughs> I'm uh, you know, in business school, launching Darius VPN. Oh uh, my gosh, so many good <laughs> ideas today, so many good business <laughs> ventures. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Well, that all sounds very, 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 very exciting. And Tharys, we love having you on. We appreciate you as no a human problem. being. And um, uh, what's, what's, uh, what's your favourite day of the week? This is my last question for you. That's a good question. Uh, I like a Thursday. Thursday's a nice. great Troy. Yours? You know, it's... Just because they start with the same letters as Tharys. Oh, predictable. Oh, I mean, to be fair, it also, it also starts as the same letter as Troy. Oh, T. Yeah, but you could say Tuesday for me and it's still, it's still line yeah, up, you know? Yeah. What, 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 I, day, I, what day of the week do I, do I get? Could, could, uh, Pink's one, yeah. I don't know. Could, what's, could, what's, actually, what's your crispy? Actually, crispy. in Britain, we say, we say Tuesday like chew, like as in C-H. Oh, so Tuesday. kind of... Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Tuesday. Mate. It's, a, it's a Tuesday. 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 <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> there you go. We made That's it work. I don't know what I get though. I have no Thank idea. You. Not nothing works with Troy or but based on you both taking the T's. It's nothing for Troy. Or, oh yeah. Uh, you Archer. can have, you can have to 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 national to... tuberculosis day i don't know that's, if that's good thing. yeah troy's tuberculosis <laughs> day <laughs> yay. That's a thing. yay for troy is that a thing i'm Excuse gonna look me? that up i'm gonna Excuse look that me? up <laughs> <laughs> oh that's tuberculosis so funny. <laughs> Okay. Crispy gets a British joke and I get tuberculosis. I mean, oh, that's one no. hell of a thing to take out of context. You, you, I mean, you drew the short straw. Yeah, there is. There's, an, there's a world tuberculosis what day. What day is it? Oh my god. Not even kidding. It's Sunday, the 24th of March, 2024. I'm not even oh. making that up. The day we record no, it. No, no, it's no. I'm looking this up. You're lying. You look You're lying. <laughs> look it up. I'm not kidding. What? Look it up You're right lying now. to me. Is oh it my today? god, it's today. It's today. Troy, it was written. Thank you it all was... for listening to episode 101 of Who's There, Doctor Who podcast. I'm going to go and seek an appointment with my doctor now, my local GP. So thank you all. Uh, I'll see you all uh, next Sunday where we go live and talk about all the news from March. There's not been much, but at least Tharys will be here to bore you. So it's goodbye from Tharys. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye from Crispy. I hope you're all right, Troy. And goodbye from me. See you all later. I'm going. Goodbye. Oh, bye.